Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Kelsey. I also call myself Dinosaur Mama and I'm here to help you with everything crafty as well as teach you how to make your own SVG files. I have to start by apologizing for being a little bit calmer today. I am feeling a little under the weather, but I knew I had to get this video out because it's a really great way to visualize how to start making your own SVGs based off your experience with Cricut Design Space. So if you feel like you understand Cricut Design Space, then trust me, you are able to make your own SVGs because today we are going to compare Inkscape, where I create all of my SVG files for free, to Cricut Design Space. And that way we can see what the similarities are. If you think that sounds like something you're interested in and you wanna start your SVG journey, please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to keep updated with all of my SVG tutorials. I'll be doing a new one every week and showing you a new technique so that you can learn how to create your own designs. With that being said, let's get started. I have a blank canvas open here in Cricut Design Space and I'm gonna show you just how similar the two programs are. So on the left-hand side of Cricut Design Space is where you're going to find your shapes. So all I'm doing right now is pulling out some of the basic shapes that they provide in Cricut Design Space. Now, I know that they have a lot more shapes in Cricut Access, but I have to say, I do not pay for Cricut Access. I don't wanna pay $10 a month to use a machine that I already spent $400 on. So I make all of my SVGs, obviously, and if you want some basic shapes, meaning all of the basic shapes that they have. Um, I do have them available on my website and I will link those below. And all I'm doing is pulling out some of the free shapes so that you can see how we were gonna make those in Inkscape. Because in Inkscape, they provide these for free as well. So we are able to create our own shapes within Inkscape, um, just like they have shapes here. So all I'm doing is pulling out some of the really basic shapes that they provide, like a star, an oval, a diamond. And then I'm gonna show you how to make those same shapes over in Inkscape. So let's jump over into Inkscape. I will link where you can download this for free below. And I am going to go over to my buttons on the side, just like in Cricut Design Space. You'll see a square and a circle. If you wanna keep a perfect circle and a perfect square, you're going to hold the control button as you pull out and that will keep those the perfect even shapes. Now these will be usable SVGs within Inkscape. From there, if you wanna just make any kind of rectangle, you don't need to hold control. So you're just gonna move around and size it just by clicking and dragging out your arrow. And then in the top right corner, at least on a Mac, you'll see these two circles and that is going to round your edges. So that's how you make the pill shape or round corners onto your rectangle. As for an oval, you'll grab that sphere again and just drag it out to whatever oval shape you want. Our next shape down is going to be a star or a geometric shape like a pentagon or an octagon, whatever you wanna create. So right now I'm in the star mode, which you can find up top in the left-hand corner once you're in that star shape. If you off click of the star shape and go back to your select tool, that's how you can rotate and move everything around. But you have to be in the select mode. Clicking back on that star and then back on the star on the side in the left, you can then change the spoke ratio, which will make your star fatter or thinner. And then you can also change it to a geometric shape if you just click over in that top left corner. So that'll switch you over to a geometric shape. So I'm gonna click out and then click on geometric shape. And now let's make the diamond, the same shape that we had over in Cricut Design Space. So really you see you're like, oh, this is making a square. I don't want a square, but you can extend this and make this into a diamond. And then in a later video, I'm gonna show you how to work with nodes. Nodes are the points from which the machine cuts. And I'll show you how to even those out, but we're gonna do that in a future video when we focus mostly on nodes. And that's the basis on how you make shapes within Inkscape. So let's jump back over into Cricut Design Space. So I started by just resizing my circle a little bit and we're gonna look at those aligned functions. All of these are over in Inkscape as well. So if I grab my two items and I hit center, it meets them halfway and it centers them. 
if I grab all three of these and I go down to the bottom and I hit center, it's going to make all three center and then I can distribute them. And what that's gonna do is make an even space in between all three. So if you know how to use all of these align features with the distribute, with the centering ver uh, vertically, centering horizontally, um, you're gonna know how to do all of this in Inkscape. It's the exact same thing. So let's jump back over into Inkscape so you can see all of this as well. So we need to get our align feature up on our screen. So you're gonna go to object and then all the way at the bottom, you're gonna see align and distribu distribute. And so this is the exact same panel that we had over in Cricut Design Space. And if you hover over each button, it's going to tell you exactly what it does. Now in Cricut Design Space, they always meet in the middle, but this drop down box at the top is going to let you choose. I always do mine to the last selected. So when I chose the square and the circle, it's gonna bring the square over to the circle, not meet halfway. And I like that it's great for when you're positioning things. But as you're learning this, just play around with this align and distribute. It does the exact same thing Cricut does, where it'll meet you in the center. If you need it to be perfectly centered, you hit both middle buttons. There's not a center button here, you have to hit two. They have a line left, they have a line left corner. Like you have to go through each one and play around, but it's the exact same way we do align and distribute within Cricut Design Space. And again, all you have to do is hover over the buttons. They have more distribute options, but I mainly use these two that I'm over right now, which is your main distribute, just like in Cricut Design Space. So when I highlight over all three and I go to distribute evenly, it's going to do exactly what Cricut Design Space does, where it gives me that equal space in between all three. So now I'm gonna go back to Cricut Design Space and we are just gonna change our colors. I think everyone knows how to do this in Cricut Design Space. So we're just clicking on each object and changing the color around. Once that's done, I'm going to center everything. And now I wanna show you that we move things up and down. I think most people know how to do this. You can also use your side panel on the right in Cricut Design Space and just kind of drag and drop everything the way you want it to be. We can do something very similar over in Inkscape, so let's go try it out. So we are in Inkscape and we are going to center everything just like we did before. I'm using our align and distribute that we just pulled up. And now I am going to move things back and forth at the top. You'll see all of these little panels and it's the exact same thing. You can move things all the way to the bottom, you can move things all the way to the top, and if you scroll over them, it'll show you what each one does. Offset and inset are a relatively new thing in Cricut Design Space, and before this was a feature, people were using Inkscape to add this to their designs. So for offset and Inkscape, you go to the left for an inset, and you go to the right for an offset, and it adds it to your shape. Now I wanna start by saying I forgot to show you how to change colors. So while you're clicked on your object or your shape at the bottom is going to be a ton of colors, all you have to do is click on the color you want. So object, then color. And if you wanna add more hues to your, your colors, you can always go to object up at the top and um, there's gonna be a drop down menu just like before that we got that align and distribute and you're going to do the one towards the top fill in stroke. And that's gonna give you a side panel again. And now you can change this for darker hues. You can add white, you can change the tone. That's how you change around all the colors. So I feel like the color options in Inkscape are a lot broader for sure. So now let's show you how you do an inset. So you're going to want to click on your object and I always start by duplicating it. Duplicating it is right clicking, going down to duplicate, and then it's going to put it right on top of that old object. So I'm gonna pull it off slightly so you can see it, and then I'm gonna put it right back to where it was. I use a lot of shortcuts now that I've been using this for a while. So I changed the color and now I'm gonna move it. Um, but I'm gonna show you all the steps and then I'll show you the shortcut. So I clicked on it, I went up to object again. I'm only on that top duplicate of the square and I'm going to go to path, I'm sorry, not, not object, path, and then inset. There's inset and outset. And so it's only gonna do it such a tiny amount. So you can go back and do it a bunch of times, or you can use the shortcut, which on my computer, because I'm using a Mac, is command and then a parenthesis. One of them's gonna be offset and one of them's gonna be inset. So same thing for the circle. I am duplicating it, right click, 
duplicate. Then I'm changing the color, just the top object. Make sure you click off, click back on, and then path and offset, or I'm sorry, outset on, on Inkscape. Again, you can use that shortcut on a Mac. It is command and then the parenthesis and play around with that. It gives you all the shortcuts for everything at the um, top. When you drop down the panel, you'll see those on the right. Now I want to move that top one back on top of the circle. So we just learned that and I sent it back. Not so long ago, Cricut updated all of its welding and slicing and all of that good stuff. So let's go through each one and see what it does. So I'm just going to center that circle back and I'm going to slice this. Slicing is in the bottom right corner and that's going to give me three pieces. The piece I sliced through, the piece that was sliced out, and then the back part. So that was the first one that we did for slice. If you hover over all of them and you do weld, that's just going to give you one piece you wouldn't really need it for this kind of situation, but for something that is like overlapping and you want to make it a new shape, weld is great. Um, Unite is very similar to weld. However, I was like, why is this different? If you go over to the right panel and you try to move it around, you're able to. So the two pieces still exist outside of the weld. I really don't understand this, this concept, honestly. And I'm just going back to my main shape again. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this out and we are going to try something different where the shapes are not um, perfectly overlapped. I had a lot of trouble with these today. They were moving around <laughs> like crazy, but I'm going to drag over both. And now we are going to try um, the Unite again. Again, it's just giving us a new shape. Um, so it'll cut like those two stars, but you can move them around. I don't really get this, this tool, if I'm being honest with you. I don't understand what its purpose could be. Um, so if someone wants to tell me, please tell me in the comments. I don't know why you would use it. Um, the next one down, we are going to hover over both, is going to be subtract. This is actually a great tool. I really like it. It's good for making shakers. Um, it's basically just like slice, um, but it doesn't give you that third piece. If we go back, highlight over, and go intersect, now you're going to be like, oh, it's just, it's giving us that main star. So it's easier to see if we kind of move that other star off of it. So let's go back and uh, get our main picture back. And now I'm going to move this star slightly off, slide over them and hit intersect again. And you see it's just that overlapping feature. So this is actually a really great tool. I'm glad they included it. Um, so that just gives you the overlap of the two. And then the last one, I'm going to do the same thing where I slide it over, hover over both, and they call this exclude. And this is going to take away that middle part, that overlap, and just leave you with the parts that are not overlapping. So those are all the buttons in Cricut Design Space. Let's look at them on Inkscape. Inkscape has really similar tools and everything is going to be under the path feature. So you're going to highlight over both. And the first one I did was difference. So that took that inset and took it out of the square. So it's really similar to exclude. Let's go over to our circle. Again, I have the two highlighted and I'm going to go down to intersection. And so what that's going to do, it's going to leave me just like on, um, on Cricut Design Space where it's going to leave me that middle part. So you wanna be highlighted over both, which I, again, I guess I just was like not in it to win it when I did this. Um, you wanna be highlighted over both, hit intersect. It's gonna leave, leave you with that middle part. Now, if we go back and we do um, the same thing, path, and then we go down to exclusion, it's gonna take out that middle. So those are all the same as in Cricut Design Space. And I wanted to try out um, division and that just kind of gave us two bits here. You can't see it, but it left us with that like crescent moon and then the other piece. And then the last one um, on there is a cut path. And I wanted to try it just for fun because I never use it. And it just took away the entire object. So you don't need to use this for anything right now. <laughs> so those are all of the same kind of things that they have in Cricut Design Space. So as you can see, a lot of the features are super, super similar. They are easy to use once you know them. And so make sure that you're checking back for new videos on how to make SVG files. And eventually you'll master it just like you mastered your Cricut. Thank you so much for joining me today as we went through Cricut Design Space and Inkscape and look at some of the similarities between the two. I hope you learned something today. And if you feel like you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and please turn on the alerts so you are made aware of all the new videos I put out every week. 
you haven't already, don't forget to go back and look at my Inkscape 101 tutorials that I have in my playlist. They will help you out when getting started on your SVG journey. Happy crafting!